All right, I am super excited to do this R tip. This is R tip 23, and we're going to be covering the PP score and correlation funnel, and we're going to be comparing these two. These are two awesome EDA packages. What you use them for, we can create things like this, a visualization that points us in the right direction and shows us which features we should be focusing our time on. So this is a super important package. Um, for example, this is what we get from the correlation funnel, and we're looking at customer churn and we want to see which features and we can see that month to month contracts tend to relate more to customer churn online security when that is no that tends to relate more to customer churn text tech support in the infinite to nine uh, relates more to customer churn and internet service equals fiber optic so that's the kind of value that you get out of these eda packages and we want to compare a couple different ones so I'm going to load the three packages that we need for this. Um, we're going to load the PPSR, uh, the Correlation Funnel, and the Tidyverse. And I'm going to check out the data set that we're going to be working on, which is the Customer uh, Churn Tibble. This comes from my Correlation Funnel package. It's a package I built, um, and it creates these types of visualizations. So this is the data set that we're going to be working on. Quick, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, make sure you sign up for the R tips if you haven't done so already. That's how you're going to get access to all of the code. And what you'll do is you'll go into your files. You'll have all of these different files for all of the different R tips that I've done. And this is 023 PP score correlation funnel. This is the file that I'm working on. That'll open up this. Okay, back to the code. First, we're going to check out the contender. So I'm going to open up the outline view. And uh, I'm going to look at the contender, which is the predictive power score. And this has been getting a lot of buzz online for good reason. Um, this is a new type of EDA package that is better than core, the standard correlation. So, um, and we'll talk about correlation versus the correlation funnel next. Uh, but what this does is it works. Um, it's got a couple different benefits. First, it's nonlinear, meaning it can detect relationships that standard correlations can't. And this is a big benefit because uh, it can um, all, often uh, correlations don't do so well when there's nonlinear relationships. So that's a big pro. Um, the next one, it works on categorical data. This is amazing. So you don't have to just feed it numeric data. So standard correlation can only work on numeric data. Uh, this one works on categorical data as well. So features like no and yes and electronic check and mail check those are all types of categories so we can we can use this cons it is iterative so it will take a little bit more time there is a do parallel option and it also does not show the direction so this is actually kind of an important thing um, it'll point you to the right feature but then you have to kind of review those each of those top features independently um, to understand what the direction of the relationship is whereas a correlation gives you a sign positive or negative this only goes from zero to one. Okay, so let's actually check this thing out. We're going to run the uh, predictive power score. I'm scoring this predictor churn versus all of the features in my data, and it gives me a predictive power score. So Y is my churn, X is each of the other features that are being related to churn, and then it has a predictive power score. And you can see most of these are zero, and then this one has 0.19. So this is good. It gives us the data, but we can actually, um, it has a plotting utility. Um, the plotting utility is uh, this visualize underscore PPS. So let's check that out. Um, it really produces a, a very nice plot. And also I have this do parallel option on, so that's what's gonna give you um, the predictive power score as fast as possible. Um, and it is, it is a iterative, so as you get your um, more features in your data or bigger data sets, uh, it will take a little bit longer to run. Okay, so I can see here, tenure is the top feature. That, that's what that 0 0.19 was right here. And total charge is 0 0.12. So it's picking out two features. But uh, the problem I see here is that all the rest of the features are zeros. And uh, while these two features are certainly going to be important to churn, um, I also want to see if there's other features that I should be checking out. So we're going to move on to the next one, which is the correlation funnel. And this is my package. I created it. Um, I actually teach it in my 201 course, um, a variant of it. Uh, and I teach you actually how to build it yourself. 
Um, and what we do is we're doing a binary version of the correlation matrix. I'll explain what that means, but first let's talk about some pros and cons. So the pros with the correlation funnel is it works on categorical data as well. And how do I do that? It's because I bin everything to make it numeric. Um, it shows the direction. So this is a big benefit here over the PPSR is it shows positive and negative relationships uh, by the sign. So, so plus or minus will tell you if it's a positive or negative relationship. Um, it works on nonlinear data. So it uses the binning trick that I'll talk about here. And it's fast. It uses Pearson correlation. Now it does have some cons. Um, some things that I've seen specifically, uh, the nonlinear relationship detection is based on the binning strategy. So if you don't pick your bins right, you're going to have poor results there. So fortunately, I pick a, a value of four bins per numeric feature, and that normally does pretty good at picking out some nonlinearities. The second one, it can suffer from issues with high data imbalance. So if you are getting very low correlations, you may need to subsample your majority class. So if churn is one and zero, but you only have like 2% of churn, uh, that's great for your business, but uh, you need to subsample the, the majority class, which is not churning um, to, to make sure that you have a better data balance. Okay, so uh, let's check it out. Here's how it works. We take our data set and I'm dropping out the customer ID uh, because that is just an ID feature. Um, we're gonna take all of the features in here and what I'm gonna do is first, I have to correct for any missing data. So if I run this without the mutate on here, uh, the binarize function is gonna say missing values detected. NAs are in total charges. So I'm, I have to correct that here before I can run binarize. Um, as soon as I do that, what we get here is a big, much bigger data set. So we can see now it is 57 columns where before it was 20 columns. And the reason that happens is because I've now just binned everything. So I'll show you how that works here in a second. Uh, when we glimpse it here, this is a good way to see how it works. So what each of these features are, are the main feature and then each of the categories gets binned or if there's a lot of different categories like tenure, um, it gets binned into negative infinity to 9, 9 to 29, 29 to 55, and 55 to infinity. So this is a numeric feature, and you can see it's been binarized. It's just ones and zeros. Cool. Uh, what this allows us to do then is when we run a correlation um, on it, so what I'm going to do is take that bin data, and I'm going to correlate for target churn yes. So remember, our target has now changed. It's now churn yes. That's what I want to identify. So when I do that, I run a correlation on it and you see how fast that worked. So I've got a uh, churn, yes, one, churn, no, negative one. So these are inversely correlated, uh, obviously because no and yes are the opposite. Uh, but then you can see things like contract month, 0 0.4, month to month contract has a, a very high positive relationship with churn. And then we can use this plotting utility to plot it next. So plot correlation funnel. Um, I'm just correlating and then plotting that correlation. So this is what we get. We have a dashed line at the zero, and you can see positive is uh, means that these are related. So month to month is positively related, and we can see that two year is actually negatively related. So what you want to try and do from the business standpoint is try to get people from month to month to two year contracts, and that'll keep churn. That'll reduce your churn quite a bit. Um, so this is the type of information you get out of the correlation funnel. So which is better? We have to have a way to compare these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out actually a third technique, and this is a little trickier, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit an XG boost model using the tidy models package, and I'm going to run this VIP. And I teach how to do feature importance in my learning labs. I teach how to do feature importance uh, in my 201 course. I'll be talking about that here at the end if you want to learn more. So I'm going to run these libraries and I'm going to um, come up with now a recipe. I'm going to uh, check out my recipe. I've spec'd it out. I'm ready to run XGBoost on it. And now what I'm going to do, my XGBoost model is complete and I'm going to do the variable importance. So what I'm looking at here is which are the top features that the XGBoost model that I fitted to the data has found. And it's saying tenure, internet service fiber optic, contract two year, 
monthly charges, total charges, and contract one year. So contract is, is going to be very important. Total charges and monthly charges are important. Um, and these are these two are kind of proxies for each other. Um, contract. So contract here is here again and tenure and internet service fiber optic. So let's check out and see which one's got those. So contract is in here. Um, we're seeing online security, which uh, online security, no, I believe was not one of the uh, important features. Uh, let's see, online security. Yes, that is not in there. And let's see what else. Uh, tech support. Uh, we do see tenure here and we're seeing that that's high got a high positive so this gives this tells you that infinite to, to nine so when they have low tenure they're much more likely to uh to churn okay and then if we go to the predictive power score it, it only got tenure and total charges certainly those are important tenure is here and total charges is here but it missed out on the uh, contract so this is um, why you definitely want to ch check out and try a couple different EDA techniques, especially if you are trying to get some results pretty quickly. If you want to learn more, uh, we have the 201 course. This is advanced machine learning and business consulting. You will learn H2 automatic machine learning and explainable machine learning using local feature feature importance using the Lime package. Local feature importance is different. We just did global feature importance here. Local is much better if you're interested in understanding specifically why some a, a single customer, an individual customer with you know ID one two three, why that customer is more likely or less likely to lead to churn. If you like this video. Don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday free R tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here, put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.